Hi. This question is really a continuation of the voltaic cell and its application in primary, secondary, and fuel cells. One thing you're going to see a lot in this particular unit is a lot of chemical equations, and in particular half reactions. Don't worry, you don't have to memorize them. You would be provided them. Let's start off with a primary cell. Let's get a picture of what a primary cell is. Um, there's one, the disposable battery, single use. I want to make note of that here underneath the primary cell. It's a single use design. Here I have some equations that go on inside of this primary cell. And above, I'm providing you a diagram which shows the movement of electrons in this particular cell. So let's start off with just the diagram. What would constitute the cathode and the anode in this particular picture? Well, this side over here, I notice, is gaining electrons. The gaining of electrons constitutes reduction. And reduction always occurs at the cathode. I remember this from a little phrase, that phrase being cats go grr. Grr standing for the gain of electrons is reduction. Cat is the cathode. And the other thing you notice in cat is this symbol here, a T. This also constitutes the positive terminal of a voltaic cell. So which of my equations down below represents the gaining of electrons? And I would advocate this one does. This equation shows these species gaining two electrodes. So this would correspond to my cathode. And by default, this would then be the anode, the one that produces the electrons. So over here, anode and it would be my negative terminal. Um, let's look at what the overall reaction would be in this cell. The first thing I have to do is ensure that the number of electrons lost and gained correspond to each other. And they do in this case. So they will essentially cancel out and we can add these together. And the overall reaction we then get is two manganese dioxide solid, um, our zinc solid, our ammonium, and then the products of our reaction, um, zinc ions, and our manganese oxide, uh, ammonia dissolved in water, and some water. What makes this reaction single use is, is a lot of the products that I, that I have here, these two in particular, being aqueous, um, they're able to disperse. Meaning they can escape. And as a result, it's unlikely we can then cause the reaction to go in reverse to recharge our battery. So when we have a lot of aqueous products or gaseous products, they can tend to spread out and make it difficult to recharge the battery which leads me to the next battery. Here I have an example of one. Um, this is a rechargeable battery, very similar in size. Uh, we call these the secondary cell. So a secondary cell, thing to keep in mind, is that they're rechargeable. Again, my electrons are moving in this direction, so over here must be my cathode because it's gaining electrons and my positive terminal. Looking down below at our two reactions, there's the equation that's gaining 
the electrons. So this would constitute my cathode and this my anode. Um, let's label it then. So over here it would be the anode reaction and it would be negative. And let's look at the overall equation in this case. So if I add this together, I'm going to get uh, lithium. Oh, my electrons lost and gained are the same. Um, the lithium ion I'll cancel. And so I'll get lithium solid plus uh, cobalt dioxide solid, making this complex with lithium cobalt dioxide solid. The thing you notice here is the presence of the solid. Um, it's unable to disperse. Because it can't spread out, it is possible to take this reaction and reverse it. And that's what I'm going to show down here in the diagram below. So instead of a light bulb, I've replaced this with a battery. And what the battery does is it forces the electrons to move in the other direction. So essentially I have to view this arrow. I'm going to make the electrons go this way. So that would be my direction of electron flow. Forcing the electrons in the other directions reverses the two reactions that I have above. So here they have been reversed. So take a quick look at the reaction up here and you can notice it's been reversed down here. And in a similar fashion, the reaction at the other electrode has also been reversed. The overall equation is really just the reverse of the one that we have here. So it would be our lithium cobalt dioxide complex forming lithium solid and our cobalt dioxide. So this is the reaction for charging my battery, whereas the equation we came up here was for discharging the battery. Now there are several types of rechargeable batteries just to make you familiar with them. Um, the one I've shown here is the lithium ion battery. These are used in uh, some automotive products now. You can find them on cordless drills and cordless nail drivers. Um, they're also in your cell phone. Um, another type of rechargeable battery that's fairly common are they're called uh, NICAD batteries, nickel cadmium um, battery, and the lead storage cell. This is typically a, a liquid battery found in automobiles. So quickly some of the advantages of a primary cell. Well, they are inexpensive, but they do generate a lot of waste. Main advantage of our secondary cells is they're reusable. But their disadvantages really have to do with type of battery we have. So I'm going to list them a bit here. Um, the lithium ion battery um, has been shown to cause some fires in some cases, quite noticeably in um, some automotive products, they've had some issues with fires. NICAD batteries, well, the cadmium is toxic um, that's in the battery. So there's some issues with the manufacturing of them. And lead storage cells, they've been around a long time, but they are quite heavy. Um, so those are a few things to keep in mind when we look at the pluses and minuses of these two types of cells. 
And finally, I just want to mention fuel cells. We probably came across this a bit earlier, but what makes this different from the other two is you have a continuous flow of the fuel in and out of the cell. Um, here I presented the two half reactions and I'm showing you the sides they occur at. Let's see if we can do the same thing and identify our cathodes and our anodes and our, our movement of electrons. So first off, um, what side is gaining the electrons? Well, over here, I can see that this side is gaining electrons. That makes this side then the cathode, Katzkoger, and that makes this side the positive terminal and my electrons must be moving that way because it's gaining electrons. So that makes over here my negative terminal and my anode. Um, this then is my oxidation reaction, losing electrons, and this one gaining is my reduction. Putting these two together, um, what do we get for the overall reaction? Well, four electrons here, two here. I'm going to need to double this particular reaction before I add it together. And let's look at what happens when we do that. We end up with two hydrogen gas plus oxygen, um, O2 gas, two H2O, and that would be a liquid. Let's now um, apply what we've just looked at to a question here. This is from a lead storage cell that's found in a car battery. First of all, which reaction occurs at the positive terminal? Well, the positive terminal is the cathode in a voltaic cell. Again, I can remember that because that T looks a lot like a positive sign. And the cathode is where reduction occurs and reduction is the gaining of electrons. So this equation shows these species gaining electrons. So that's the one that occurs at the positive terminal. Give a suitable equation for charging the battery. These equations show the discharging of a battery. So I need to reverse them. And let's look at what they look like when they're reversed. So there's equation number one reversed. And there's equation number two reversed. Let's see if we can cancel out anything common to both sides. Uh, we have two electrons and two electrons. And adding this together, we get two um, lead sulfates solid and two H2O liquid, producing our lead um, oxide solid and lead solid. And um, that's going to be two of those, four of those, that's going to be uh, two sulfuric acid. And finally, what makes this a good reaction for recharging? Well, we've got those um, products that aren't going to disperse very easily. So the products don't disperse. So that's it for primary cells, secondary cells, and fuel cells. Thanks for watching.